Good morning, beautiful people of the world. Good morning, teen. How are you on this beautiful Saturday uh, afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are in the country? Um, today is May 11th. Today is my grandmother's birthday. I believe she would have been uh, probably 90 something by now. Um, we lost her back in 1989, but today is her birthday, and uh, today is also a friend of mine's birthday as well. So I want to give a shout out to everybody whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday to you. Um, if you are celebrating the anniversary, birthday, birth of a baby, grandbaby, your baby, or promotion, or whatever. Um, I'm here for it. Congratulations and happy birthday, happy anniversary, and all of that good stuff to all of you all. I'm feeling wonderful this morning. Um, I thank God for waking me up to see another day that I have not seen before and will never see again, but I thank and give him honor, glory, and praise for it. Amen, somebody. Amen. So I am on my way to get a mammogram. I think I told you all that on yesterday, which was Friday. And uh, yeah, so I'm on my way to get a mammogram. I am not uh, excited about getting uh, the Tata smashed. However, whenever you have to go for any type of, you know, procedure or anything, it always has you, you know, kind of little, you know, tense, a little worried. You know, a little like, hmm, you know. Um, but I know that all is well. I know that God is with me no matter what it is. That um, he's with me all the time. So I'm on my way to, uh, oh shoot, okay, can't turn here. Huh, okay. They're doing some kind of work right here up and come back so yeah um i'm on my way to get a mammogram and um not looking forward to it but it is what it is as you see i got a new do don't know how i feel about this hair don't know if i'm gonna keep this um it's kind of it's real real bushy and um I don't know it ain't my thing you know it, it really ain't my thing but we gonna rock and roll with it uh, we gonna rock and roll with it <sighs> we gonna rock and roll with it and see what what it do do <laughs> but it ain't it ain't it ain't my thing it ain't my thing it ain't my thing so she pent it up because when she took it down it was a lot of hair and um, my mother was like you should have cut it I was like yeah it probably should have so yeah, it's not really my thing, but uh, yeah, we're going to rock with it. We ain't got no other choice. So, oh, so much traffic, so much, so much traffic. It's a beautiful day here in the city. It's like 66 degrees. Something like that. Come on. Need you to move out the way so I can do what I need to do. So, yeah. Um, I wonder what happened here. Look like somebody, some kind of shoplifting thing going on or something. All these police out here. Hmm, I don't know what this is about. Bet you somebody stole something. This CVS pharmacy right here. It's terrible. But, um, what was I gonna say? Um, I'm glad it's Saturday. I'm glad it's the weekend, finally. Finally, I'm glad it's the weekend. I'm always looking forward to uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I'll be glad when 
I'll be glad when it's the weekend. I live for the weekend. So we are going this evening, the family, we're going to take my nephew out to um, to dinner to celebrate. He has officially became a police officer. I think I mentioned it to you all. Um, he had his pinning ceremony um, Thursday, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. And um, we are so incredibly proud of him. He is a police officer. So I asked, did, did you all pray for him? This is my baby, y'all. This is my, my sister's firstborn. Um, and he is just my heart. He just don't, he, he doesn't know. He doesn't know it, but he is my heart. He is, he is my heart. And I, I love him. He is such a... Um, he is such a good young man. He has he's 34. He doesn't have any children. Um, he's never been in any gangs. He's never been in jail. He don't smoke weed. He don't drink. His pants ain't hanging off his ass. He is a good young man. A good kid. I love him to pieces. And um, just a good young man. So, you know, we are just praying and being prayerful because we know that uh, police officers' jobs are not easy. And, you know, they are not respected, you know, as they used to be back in the day. You know, they're not respected. But um, I just solicit you all's prayers from my, my nephew. He is an outstanding young man, and we are so incredibly proud of him. I do believe he graduates from the academy officially in an, either this week or next week. But, um, I mean, he has been through hell going through, through the process of the academy. It's like being in the army almost, you know. But he made it, and we were praying for him, and we all told him, listen... If it get too rough and you feel like this is something you don't want to do, we got your back, you know. But he stuck with it. And his father uh, was a uh, police officer for 26 years. And um, he, um, he retired uh, some years back. So he had the, uh, he had the, um, the honor of pinning him, giving him his star, putting his star on him. So it's been a very emotional couple of few couple of days, you know, um, because of course we're nervous and we're scared, um, but um, we can't put anything really no no pictures or anything on social media. They, the academy asked them not to do that because of uh, you know so many police officers are being killed and being targeted, and they just don't they don't want them to put anything on social media. It's unfortunate that we live in this type of society, type of world where, again, police officers are not, you know, respected the same way. And some of it is the police fault and, and, and some of it is the citizens fault, you know, so, but I just ask you all to pray for him and whatever way you feel about police officers, please don't get on here and say nothing negative because I'm going to curse you out. I'm telling you that now. Don't get on here saying nothing about you know, him becoming a cop or none of that. You know, whatever your views are about police officers, I understand it and I get it. But keep it to yourself. Okay? Um, so, so yeah, that it's been a really emotional time for our family, you know, because we scared, we nervous, but, we, but, we, but at the same time, we are extremely proud of him, proud of him. And I have um, a first cousin who is a police officer. I have another cousin who's my second cousin. She's a police officer. I have so many friends and other family that are retired police officers. So I, I do my best, and especially because my nephew now is a cop. I do my best to, um, to give respect and honor to those that are serving because whew, child that's just not an easy job not an easy job at all um what time is it it's 11.04 it's so much traffic going this way 
I hate coming down 87th Street going west on a Saturday. So much traffic. I'm glad I did the pre-checking and my appointment is at noon. But, um, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you all about was that yesterday, um, I took my son to see his grandmother, his other grandmother, the sperm donor's grandmother. She had made myself and my mother a Mother's Day basket. Very, very pretty. And she called me up. She said, Sherelle, I made you a basket. I want you to come get it. I made one for you and your mom. I said, okay. So I went by there. And of course, I took Christopher because he hasn't seen her in a while. And, uh, you know, his the sperm daughter mother and I, we get along so well. And I have always given her respect. Although I cannot stand her son, and I have nothing for her son, I do not talk about him to her. I do not, um, I do not, um, holiday celebrations i'm looking at it's a balloon shop right here three one two five three zero forty twenty three i don't have a pen i'm gonna have to come back down here what's the name of the special okay um the reason why i was looking at that because i want some balloons for my housewarming party but anyway um so you know i've always given her her respect um and mainly because it's you know that's his mother and she's never we we don't have a bad relationship even when he and i was together we had a great relationship and a lot of things that he did she was on my side you know, she always tell him she was the best. That was the best. That was the best woman for you. She was the best. She was the best thing for you. You know, and I never. We had one incident when he did something to me, and I had put him out, and I was trying to get my keys back. And she kind of got a little. She kind of said something to me, but I left it alone. You know, I didn't. I didn't disrespect her. My mother happened to be there. My mother was like, don't do that. You know, don't, you know. But I said all of that to say that over the years, the 16 years that Christopher has been here, um, and this man has not did anything for him, and he has not tried to come on. Why are you driving this slow? Really? has not tried to be a father to him, has not acknowledged him, has not, um, you know, ever said happy birthday or sent him a card. I mean, nothing. I have bit my tongue, although I have said enough and I have said a lot and she knows how I feel. So anyway, um, she was telling us yesterday when we went to see her and pick up the basket, that his birthday is in June, the sperm donor. And he's gonna be back here in Chicago. And he told his mom that he would like to see Christopher. And I guess he told her that to tell me that. Now, let me rewind this tape back a little bit. When Christopher turned 13, he asked me, could he, well, let me say this. Christopher has never seen him. He's never laid eyes on him. Christopher saw him when he was about, um, I just don't understand. Christopher saw him when he was about three, three or four. We had set it up where he could have, you know, go and, you know, you know, see, uh, get to get get with him. Christopher and him could get together, and they would spend time together. And that did not last very long because oh, I'm so glad you're turning. Jesus, hurry up! Damn. 
Damn. Um, sorry, y'all. Just driving like a damn cell. This cab. Come on, shit. Anyway, so I had set it up where they could uh, visit and we would meet at Burger King. So, wait till the last minute to put on the blanket to turn up into Dunkin' Donuts. So, they would meet, we would meet every Friday for him and Christopher to sit. And Christopher was very little. Well, that only lasted maybe a month, if that long. Because once he he started asking me, well, why why we gotta meet at this Burger King? Why I can't come to your apartment and meet and, and see him? Motherfucker, you will never get up in my apartment ever. When I put your motherfucking ass out that apartment, that same apartment I just moved from, when I put your ass out of there. I, I vowed to myself that you would never step your fucking foot in my house, in my apartment. And I meant that. So I told him, this is the way that it is. You can see him here at this Burger King every Friday or not at all. Well, he's a narcissist. And he likes to, he's a, he, he likes to control the dynamics, you know. So he was like... Well, it just don't make sense for us to have to come here every weekend. I said, it makes perfectly good sense. These, this, is, this is my room. You cannot come to my house. And seeing that you went and got married before I had Christopher, we can't go to your house either. And nor would I come to your house. He said, well, then he wanted me to come to his mom. I said, no, we're not going to your mother's house to eat them. No. No, you a nothing ass man. You don't have your own apartment for you for you to even take your son to. And you went and got married. So I said, this is where we will meet. And if this is not what you are willing to do to see your son, then you just won't see him. Well, you know, you got a whole apartment over there. I don't understand why I can't come there. You don't need to understand. You don't pay rent there. You don't get to decide how I decide where you can visit him at. So I said, is there another place you would like to visit him other than Burger King? You know, where, where else? Well, like I said, you got a whole apartment. I don't understand. Like I said, this is where we meet. And if we can't meet here, we can't meet nowhere. If you have another place you want to meet, I'm willing to do that. But you ain't coming to my house to sit up in my house. Because one thing I knew that I would never get rid of his ass if he ever came and set, came back up in my house. That he would want to try to stay, even though he was married. Even though he was married. Because he never moved on from me not wanting to be with him. He's always, even to this day, and I ain't saying this on no braggadocious nothing. He has always wanted me. Excuse me. He has never been able to get over that. You know what I'm saying? So, I said, this is the rule. So, because the rule was, was he couldn't get with it. He couldn't come to my apartment. He stopped the visitations. He stopped showing up. I would call him. Um, I'll meet you there at such and such time. He wouldn't answer the phone. So, I said, okay. Okay. So that was the end of that. That was the end. Now again, again, this is your child. I wouldn't give a fuck if somebody said I gotta go to the go to a, in, in the goddamn hole. If I wanna be in my child's life, I'm gonna do whatever I got to do to be in my child's life. Because my child is more important to me than where I see him at. But because he's a narcissist and because he wants to control the dynamics and he always thought he could control me, that wasn't good enough. So he stopped showing up. Fine. So now that's fast forward to Christopher turning 13. Christopher turns 13. Christopher says to me, Ma, I'm 13. I'm a teenager now. I want to reach out to my father. What do you think? So... Of course, I was not not for that because I know how he is and I know meaning this I know how the sperm donor is and I did not want Christopher to 
get his hopes up high and to be hurt. So I said, well, Christopher, if you want to do that, okay. He said, well, do you have a way of reaching out to him? So I said, I do. He said, you, do you have a number? I said, I do. He said, can I call him? I said, you can. So Christopher called him from his phone. Christopher's had a cell phone since he was nine. So he called him. And when he called him, he was shocked. Christopher said, hi, may I speak to Anthony? And uh, he said, uh, hey, this is Anthony. Who is this? And Chris said, this is your son. And he got quiet. Dead quiet. This on the phone. He said, who? This is Anthony. And he says, this is your son, Christopher. He gets quiet again. Now, it took a 13-year-old to reach out to a grown-ass man who had a mother, a sister, and a brother that he could have used as an ally to get to me and to Christopher he could have sent Christopher anything he wanted. I have been, I have been, I told you, I've been living at that address for 18 years. Christopher is 16. I lived there two years before I had Christopher. Same address. He knew where my mother lived. He knew the address. He knew where my sister lived. He had the address. He never, ever came to my mother's house and dropped a case of milk, a case of diapers, a toy, Christmas, birthday, nothing. Nothing. At 11 years old, Christopher had a major heart surgery procedure. He got pissed off when his, his mother, because his mother told him, why she didn't call me and tell you? Why the fuck would I call you and tell you anything about my son? And I say my son because Christopher is my son. I provide health insurance for Christopher. I provide clothing, food, and any other thing. His birthday, anything Christopher wants. It comes out of my pocket. Okay? So, I say my son. Christopher has my last name does not have his last name. I would not dare give you, I wouldn't give a frog, and I hate frogs. I wouldn't give a frog his motherfucking last name, let alone a human being. Okay? I would not. His name is not on his birth certificate. He refused to come to the hospital to sign it because Christopher wasn't going to have his last name. And the reason why Christopher don't have his last name, because he does not and what would not keep a job we went to child support court they told him that he needed to get a job to provide health insurance he has not paid not one motherfucking dime in child support in 16 years he owes four he owes he's supposed to pay me four hundred dollars a month he's never paid it He's now at the, at the last time I talked to child support, he was sixty thousand dollars in the rears. I'm sure it's much more than that. Another slow ass driving person. Oh Jesus! I think these people only get their car the cars on the weekend. So he never has paid child support. He has never called him. He has never sent him a card on his birthday. Christopher graduated from eighth grade. He never sent a card. Five dollars, ten dollars, nothing. 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 He has had so many ways to get to to do whatever he wanted to do to be in Christopher's life. Nothing. So 
when he said, when Christopher said, this is your son, and he got quiet on the phone. And so then he was like, oh, hey, hey, man, how you doing? And Chris was like, I'm doing good. How you doing? He was like, I'm doing good. And they went on to have the conversation. And he went on with this like he always do. Well, you know, I love you. That's what he do. He go into this whole motherfucking crap because it's guilt. I just, I just want you. I, be, I got pictures of you. And, and, then, and Chris said, so you know who I am? He was like, yeah, man, I know who you are. He was like, oh, so you know who I am. And you you know who I am and you ain't never reached out to me? You ain't never? He got quiet. So, they kept this conversation, this dialogue, calling each other, texting each other. And then, Anthony just So here I am. Now I gotta put Chris, mold him, put him back together, cause he was fine. Well, they're never fine when they're when their their parents are not in their life. They're never fine. So Chris said, "I, you know, I haven't heard from him." I'm like, he's like, he ain't said nothing. You know, I had called him. He don't answer. He don't call me. He don't reach out. I said, well, maybe you should reach out to him again. So he did. So Chris said, where have you been? I've been calling you. I've texted you. I haven't heard from you. He said, it's been three weeks. Because because initially, when they first started talking, Anthony was, you know, calling, texting, calling, texting. And then, nothing. So he tells a 13-year-old, well, man, you know, I, 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 I be wanting to call you, but I don't know if you be busy. Say what? He 13. How motherfucking busy is a 13 year old? He goes to school. Come home. He goes to school. Come home. He got a job. Say what? So Chris said. I'm listening. I mean, we in the car. I'm listening. Because the whole time when Christopher first picked up the phone and called him, I was sitting there grinding my damn teeth because this motherfucker was lying. He has a white girlfriend or had a white girlfriend named Tammy. And this bitch went on my Facebook page and took all the pictures. You know, because you can, you, you can save pictures to your phone. She took all the pictures that I had put up with Christopher downloaded them to her phone and sent it to this motherfucker. Because at the time he wasn't on Facebook. He on Facebook now. This bitch ass is blocked. So he tells so he tells Christopher that you know, he just don't know if Christopher is busy. So Chris was like, what? He was like, what do you mean you don't know if I'm busy? He said, I'm not busy. He said, I've been waiting for you to call me. Well, you know, man, you can reach out to me. You ain't did a motherfucking thing for him. And you gonna tell him he can reach out to you? So Chris said, you the parent. You supposed to be the parent. Another thing he had a problem with was that Christopher kept calling him Anthony. You know, um, I think I, I really need you to call me daddy. Bitch, you ain't earned daddy 
You ain't earned daddy uh, privileges, motherfucker. You don't, even, you don't even say happy birthday to him. You want to be called daddy? But being the narcissist that this motherfucker is, see, he wants all the recognition. He wants to pump his chest out. My son, my son, it ain't this shit. So Chris said, I don't know you. So I'm not going to call you daddy. He said, but I will call you Anthony. Then Chris told him, he said, you want me to call you mister? <laughs> I, I was busting up. Like, if you want the respect, I'll give it to you, but daddy. So then Chris hit him with this. He said, no, he said, I can't call you daddy. He said, because my daddy is, is, is not here anymore. And Anthony was like, what you mean? He said, my papa. He said, my, which was my father. He said, that's who, my, who I call daddy. He said, but I can't call you daddy. He said, I don't know you. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, you know, because I mean, you know, you keep calling me Anthony. He's like, and, and you know, I'm your daddy and I deserve, listen to this, and I deserve to have that respect. Motherfucker. When I tell y'all I was over here like about to tear this motherfucking chair, car chair, car seat up. I want to just, just say, I want to say, bitch, I'll stab you in your motherfucking throat and watch you bleed out and take pictures and be clapping. Just watch you die. What the fuck are you talking about? So I didn't say nothing. I kept quiet through that whole phone conversation. So Chris said, well, I'm not going to call you daddy. So he said, but anyway, Chris went on saying, he's 13. He said, but anyway, I just was wondering why I hadn't heard from you. So he went back into this bullshit about he think Chris is busy and all of this old stupid shit. And so then Chris was like, well, you know, if you're not going to call me or you're not going to text and you're not going to keep in touch with me, then, you know, I don't see the point of us continuing this. So this motherfucker got mad. Well, listen here. Like I said, like I said, like I said, you big fat, big bastard ape, big head motherfucker. Like I said, uh, you know, you can reach for me sometime. I wanted to just vomit. So Chris said, okay. He said, well, I'm not going to call you no more. So he was like, what you mean? He said, what I just said. I'm not going to call you anymore. I'm done. That's what Chris said. He said, I'm done. He said, because I've reached out to you. I've tried to uh, call you and talk to you. And, and you know, and you, he said, you, you know, you, you act like you don't want to be bothered. You know. So, oh, finally here. So, he said, well, I, you know, I mean, you know, if that's how you feel. That's what he said to him. And Chris said, yeah, that is how I feel. And he said, but again, like I said, you know, uh, you calling me Anthony, you know, and all this, you know, and, you know, I just, you know, yeah, yeah. He's just so disrespectful, then, yeah, yeah, all this. <coughs> so, <clears throat> um, you know, he went on with the bullshit, you know. And uh, what got, what what pissed me off was when he told, uh, when Chris said, well, okay, you know, what, you know, all right. So Chris, you know, was like, all right. So he said, but like I said, you need to, you need to show some respect. And Chris said, show some respect. He said, again, I don't know you. I'm trying to get to know you. Well, you know what? I, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Because you real disrespectful, young blood. You real disrespectful. But let me tell you this. Let me tell, let, 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 let me tell you this. I'm a GD. I'm a GD. I'm a gangster disciple. I'm a GD. I was, I'm a GD for life. I'm a GD, GD for life. And then I'll come up to Chicago because he live in Kentucky. I'll come up to Chicago and beat your motherfucking ass. Say what? Chris said, what? When I tell you he flipped, he flipped. 
So, I told Christopher, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. Because enough was enough at this point. You're going to threaten your 13-year-old son because you want him to call you daddy. And you've, you've missed 13 motherfucking birthdays. You missed graduation. You don't know if this boy eat. You don't know if he clothes. You don't know nothing. You just assume. And I always say, I look like Marge from The Simpsons. And you gonna tell him that you come up and beat his ass? Cause you GD? Bitch, what? I told Christopher, hang up the phone. So Chris said, and this was another thing he made his mistakes doing too. He kept always, he told him that I kept him away from him. Chris said, well, I know your mother. I know my auntie and I know my uncles, but I don't know you. He said, I know my sister, but I don't know you. Because he got an older daughter. who he, out, he, he didn't do shit for her either. He, he really fucked her up. And I love her. I love her. But she's got some issues. And part of the reason why she has issues is because of him. So. You gonna threaten him? So I told Christopher, I said, hang up the phone. Stop talking to this motherfucker. Because I'm going to be on the first team smoking to Kentucky and find his bitch ass. Because I don't give a fuck. I give, I give no, no hell about going to jail when it comes to my baby. I don't care who it is. I don't give a fuck if you are the sperm donor. Because you ain't no father. I will never give you respect as a father. I don't give you much respect as a human being. You're a fucking worm. You're less than a worm. I would rather see a rat than see your motherfucking bitch, warris ass, big head motherfucker. He's gained so much weight. Because this is what happens when your motherfucking ass don't work. This is what happens when you don't work. This is what happens when you sit on your ass. Because that would he'll be what? I'm 54, so he'll be 56. When you have sat for the last 56 years on your motherfucking ass, you get fat. He had the nerve to say I was fat. He had the nerve to tell me that I can't get no man. And 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 uh and, and I ain't I ain't had a man since him. I said I didn't have one when I was with you. I told him, I said, I'd rather eat pussy than ever fuck you again. I said, I must have been high. I must have been on drugs. I must have been on dope. I must have been. I said, I don't even remember fucking you. And the thought of ever makes me want to jump off a motherfucking building and bust my whole body wide open than to ever, ever think that I would have to lay and fuck you again. So... Uh, I told Chris to hang up the phone. I was heated. So I could not wait until like Christopher went in the house. My mama said, don't call him, just leave it alone. Uh-uh. Nope. I called him up. I cussed him out. I said, bitch, I said, I will stab you and cut your motherfucking ass from your pinky toe to your dick to your balls to your motherfucking eyeballs if you ever threaten my child that you gonna come up and beat his motherfucking ass. I said, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get 10 feet close to him before I, I ended your motherfucking life. I said, you are, you are fortunate that I love your mama. I said, because I would have fucked you up a long time ago. But the only reason why I ain't put you in the motherfucking grave is because of your mama. Oh, he, you know, he was calling me all, you know, you got him so spoiled and you got him goddamn right. You, you right. I got him. He gonna tell me that he ain't gonna call me uh, daddy. I said, he and he not. 
I said, are you a daddy? So we had words. Okay, so now fast forwarding. He's coming up here in June and he's told his mama that he wants to see Christopher. And to tell me, to tell, to tell me that he wants to see Christopher. He just, Christopher just had a birthday in March. He knows when, he told Christopher he know his birthday is March 8th. When I tell you all that if there was if there was a way to commit suicide for people that you have fucked with and you have slept with and you had children by I would kill myself that's how much I hate the fact that I ever 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 slept with him I ask myself all the time, what the fuck was wrong with you? So, Christopher was sitting there when she said that he said that he wants to see him. And Christopher was looking funny. And um, when we left, he said, what do you think about that? And I was honest. I said, I cannot tell you what to do because you're 16. I said, if you want to know my opinion, no. Now, before y'all all get on here, oh, you, I gave you the history. See, he's the type of motherfucker, he wants it on his terms. He wants to parent. He wants to see him. He wants to be around him on his terms. It does not work like that with a child. It does not. You don't get to decide when you want to parent, when you want to do this and that for, and the other. But I told Christopher, I said, whatever. You can't stop messing with this hair. I said, whatever you decide, I will support you. 100%. He said, well, I, I would want you to be there. I don't want to see him alone. I said, fine. I'll be there. He said, I can't do it. I can't. Do it. He was getting so emotional and it was breaking my heart. He was tearing up last night in the car. He was like, I can't do it. I can't do it alone. He said, I need you. Because I originally, originally had told him that I would just drop him off at the grandmother's house. He said, no, I can't. I can't. He said, I can't do that. It is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking to see your child in so much emotional pain when it comes to a motherfucker who could not be present in his life. I don't know how you say you love a child that you've never spent time with, that you have never seen since he was three, that you have never picked up that phone to make any kind of contact with him. He always said, told his family, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to know him when he get older. Where's the guarantee that he wants to get to know you when he get older? So I am extremely frustrated, heartbroken. I feel a lot of guilt. I feel a lot of shame. I feel horrible seeing my baby, my son, go through this. And I am the cause of it because of my horrible choice in a motherfucking nothing. I can't even call him a man. Because understand this, and I'm going to say this to the women. I'm not talking about men. Understand this as a woman. When you decide to lay down with these nothings, your child will suffer for your motherfucking choice. They will suffer 
every child that you have by a nothing ass motherfucker will suffer. They will suffer. It is hard seeing this boy suffer. He told me, he said, I cry all the time that I don't have a father in my life. He said, you just don't, he said, I don't cry openly. He said, but I cry inside. He said, it's hard. And I know I am not responsible for him not being nothing, but I, I fucked a nothing. And I got pregnant and had a child. His DNA is in him. Because, ladies, I'm telling you, you need to think about that while you pulling your panties down. You know these men ain't shit. You have baby after baby after baby after baby by different fathers that ain't shit. One is enough. Why do you keep having multiple children by motherfuckers that ain't shit? You can't blame that on the man. You got to look at yourself and say, why do I keep fucking motherfuckers that ain't shit? You keep laying and producing and bringing forth life. Let me be a, let me be a living testimony of what you don't want to do. If you a young girl looking at this video, when you pulling your panties down, Think about what you finna do and who you doing it with and what could come from that. Save your body for the man that's gonna be there not only for you but be a representation and a father to his children. Whether you all make it or not. Whether you make it or not. I don't want this motherfucker. I didn't want him when I fucking had him. I didn't love him. I wasn't in love with him. Not at all. I don't know what point of where I was in my life that I hooked up with him. I don't know. But obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't in my motherfucking right mind because I knew better. I knew better. I had been raised better. He was a nothing then. He's still a nothing. He was beneath me then. He's still beneath me. I still have more than him. I still raised above and, and did what I had to do. He ain't never been shit. And you know these men ain't shit. And you continue to fuck. You continue to fuck these men that ain't shit. And you continue to get pregnant. You continue. You continue. You, continue, you got three or four babies. By nothings. And your child will suffer. Because only you can only do so much as a mother. You can only do so much alone. Stop having babies by nothings. It ain't it, it ain't they it is the man is who the fuck he is. He ain't gonna change. You had had one baby, you had two babies. Why you got three? Why you got four? Why you got five? Why you got six? Why you got seven? Why you got eight? Why you got nine? Why you got ten? It's a lot of young girls who got 10 kids by 10 different baby motherfuckers that ain't shit. If you had one, that's enough. Listen to me. I'm 54 years old. I know what I'm talking about. My child is suffering because of my choice. So yes, I overcompensate. Yes, I do this. Yes, I do that. Yes, yes, because of my own guilt. I feel so guilty. Because my baby is suffering. He's suffering. I knew my daddy. Had my daddy in my life all my life. I knew who he was. Whether I agreed with him, didn't agree with him, whether we fought, didn't me, I, I knew who he was. He didn't miss nothing in my life. I gotta go ahead and get this mammogram. You older ladies that's watching this video, talk to your grandchildren. Talk to your nieces. Talk to every young girl you come in contact with. We can't save everybody. It's impossible. But if you can save one, tell them to watch this video. 
stop pulling your panties down. Stop pulling your panties down. Think about when you're pulling your panties down. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Keep your virginity. Keep it. Keep it. Because you're going to suffer along the way when you give it up. You're going to suffer. I'm here to tell you, you're going to suffer. And then you have a baby, you're going to suffer even more. I was blessed. I was fortunate that I had my mother and my father and I had friends and family. I had a village that helped me with this boy. I, I, I praise God and I thank God for that. But everybody don't have that. That ain't everybody's story. And then we wonder why they all here carjacking and robbing and doing, uh, running SUVs up in the stores. These are 12 and 13 year olds. Because they didn't have the village. And because the mama don't know what to do. And the daddies ain't nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. So I'm going to say this and I'm going to end this. I share a lot about me with you guys. About my life. Where I've been. What I've gone through. The struggles I've had. But this is a struggle right here for me. I don't want to discourage Christopher. But I don't want my child hurt. I don't want him hurt. I don't want nobody to hurt him nobody. I will take a bullet for him. I will die and let him live. I will drown. If we both in the water drowning, I will let myself drown before I let my child drown. So I'm going to ask that you all pray for Christopher. I cannot, I cannot find it nowhere in my heart to ask you to pray for him, for the sperm donor. I have nothing but hatred for him. And I have to pray about that all the time because that's one person that I, I, I've always said I could never kill anybody, but I could when it come to him because of what he's done to my son. What he's done to me has already been dead and it's over and it's in the past, but the present and the future is this child this child that we have and what he has done to my son I will never ever ever forgive him and I have to pray constantly constantly I have to pray because I know that's not right I know that's not of God but I have to ask God to help me because if he died tomorrow, I would feel nothing. I would go and I would console his mother because his mother lost a child. But I would not go to his funeral. I probably would go and turn the motherfucking casket over. And say, bitch, roll your fat ass out of there. Pray for Christopher. Pray for him. I know you all pray for me. And I don't need you to get on here and be judgmental and say, oh, Sh Sherelle, CC, that ain't right. I know. But you ain't even got to say it because I know. I know. So, something's sticking me in my head. But anyway, so let me go. I will be back tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow I'm going to be doing a sheet in haul. Either I'm going to do it recorded tonight or I'm going to record it in the morning. Now that I'm in the house and I got a lot more light, I may record it tonight. I don't know. We'll see. But you all have a blessed Saturday. Have a great weekend. And uh, I got to find this hairpin because it's sticking. I can't find it. It's really sticking. pan in here and it is really sticking in my head. Oh, can't get it. There we go. Is that it? Let's get them tight. 
But anyway, y'all have a good day. I don't know what we're going to do with this hair. If I make it to the end of the week with this on, it'll be a miracle. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, y'all have a good day. Like I said, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow. We'll see. All right. Have a good day. Have a blessed day. And remember before you put down your panties, is it worth it? And that ain't just to young women. That's to all of us. As we as women need to, we need to think about when we getting ready to pull them panties down, we getting ready to step out of them. Is it worth giving it to these motherfuckers? Is it worth it? Real talk. Because it's not just getting a baby. It could be him giving you a venereal disease. It could be hell that you about to pay for fucking with him. Think about it. Y'all have a good Saturday. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.